So today I'm going to show you how to do a retrofit on your 05 to 2011 Toyota Tacoma. I'd recommend you wear some latex gloves so that you don't dirty up the reflective surfaces and your cleanup is very minimal at the end. Before you throw the headlights in the oven, turn your headlights and remove these three screws that hold the lens to the housing. Now that our oven is preheated at 255, let's go ahead and place the headlight in the oven for five minutes. Next step is to throw your headlight in the oven and make sure when you're placing it, it's not touching the sides because that can melt the housing. Now we're gonna take the headlight out of the oven, set it on top. Here we have our seal splitter. Now the reason we use this tool rather than a flathead is because once you put it into the channel, it provides even pressure on the lens and the housing so that you don't damage anything. If you use a flathead, that often damages the seal and that creates many problems down the road and that's the last thing you want. Now, before you start prying, push back these little tabs. Now we take our seal splitters, put them between the lens and the housing and start prying. Now that you made the initial split with the seal splitter, you can stick a flat head in the opening to hold your place and either continue going around the housing with the seal splitter or you can use your hands. Now that you have the lens and bezel off, you can set that over to the side and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is to pop out this chrome reflector bowl out of this headlight housing so we can mount it on the table to shine on the wall to get a light output. Now we're gonna unscrew these two bolts that hold the reflector bowl in. Now to release this clip from the reflector bowl, take a flathead screwdriver, position it in there so you can pry up, take your needle nose pliers, press down the two tabs on this clip and pry up. Just like that. Now the next step is to mount the reflector bowl onto a table or a bench about 20 to 25 feet away from the wall and mask off the hotspot. Now this is a reference for when the projector goes into the reflector bowl. Now that we have our beam pattern masked off on the wall, now we jump into the projectors. Now what we have in front of you is the Morimoto D2S 5.0 projectors. And this is what all is included in the box. And I'll just give you a quick rundown. Now, the first thing that's included in the little baggie is this pigtail right here. This activates the high beam solenoid in the projector. So you start off by plugging in this black plug into the projector, like so. These pins will go into this 9005, 9006 connector, but that's for a later time. Next piece that is included in this baggie is the silicone washer. Now this goes on the projector like so. And the main purpose of this is to isolate the projector in the bowl to reduce any kind of vibrations. Now the next thing that's included in the hardware baggie is this H4 positioning washer. 
To install this, you want to align this pin with the groove on the projector and it just slides right on. Once that washer is put on, the next thing that's included in the hardware baggie is the 5.0 lock ring. To install this, you just simply thread it on. And remember, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Now, the last thing that's included in the box is the D2S moto holder. Now, to install this, you also just put it on and thread it on. The next step, once you've unboxed the projector, is to take your reflector bowl and you have to remove this shield right here. So, to do that, flip it around, take off this screw, take some needle nose pliers, bend these two tabs in, flip it around, and just pull it out. Now once that's removed, the next step is to unhook this bulb clip and just wiggle it out. So once you've unboxed your 5.0 projectors, you wanna go ahead and plug in the pigtails, put on the silicone washer, and let's start putting it into the reflector bowl. Now the first step is to route these solenoid wires through this hole. So the next step is to pick up the projector and start putting it into the reflector bowl. Just line up the threaded shaft with the hole. Now once your projector is through, you want to go ahead and pick up your H4 positioning washer and go ahead and put it on. Make sure you line up the pin with the groove. Next you can pick up your 5.0 lock ring and thread it on. Now I do want to mention that we did have to trim off this excess material around the lock ring because it wasn't fitting. Now to do that we did use our Dremel Easy Lock cutoff wheels. Now I do want to mention that once you install this lock ring you don't want to tighten it down just yet. You want to put it back on the bench and shine it on the wall to align it and then you can tighten it down with the 5.0 lock ring tool. Now the 5.0 lock ring tool isn't included in the box but it can be purchased separately which I highly recommend for a much smoother install. Now that we have it all lined up on the wall, wow, look at the difference between this and the halogen beam. This is perfect for nighttime driving. Now that we have the output right on the wall, now's a good time to snug down the lock ring. Take your 5.0 lock ring tool, go ahead and install it on the lock ring. Make sure the pins line up with the notches. Take either a ratchet or a wrench that's 10 millimeters and tighten it down. Now you don't want to over tighten it, but you want to get it nice and snug. If you over tighten it, you run into the risk of cracking the housing. Now that we have the lock ring snug down, I'm going to add some JB Weld on top just as an added security so down the road the lock ring doesn't get loose on you from the road vibrations. The way to properly mix this JB Weld is to run two beads side by side at an equal length. Now you just want to mix them together thoroughly. Once you have that mixed, carefully apply it to the lock ring, making sure that you do not apply it to the threads. All right, so next up we have our projector shrouds. On the left here, I have a shroud that has the LEDs already pre-installed. And on the right, I have a standard shroud that doesn't have any LEDs installed, but can be installed as an extra. Now, both of these shrouds have these five clips that are designed to fit most of our projectors. Now, if you choose a standard shroud, we have a variety of halos that come in different sizes and colors that you can choose from on the website. Now, when determining your halo size, you first want to determine the placement of your halos. Most people generally get a halo and mount it on the front of the shroud, like so. Another method is to grab a bigger size and mount it on the inside of the shroud so that when it lights up, it lights up through these slots in the front. Now another way is to take your halo and mount it on the inside of the shroud so that when it fires, it shines into the reflector bowl and it reflects out just for a different effect. Now this is an example of mounting the LED halo inside the shroud with the LEDs facing through the slots. Now this is an example of mounting the LED halo inside the shroud with the face of the LEDs shining towards the reflector bowl. So we decided to mount a halo on the front of the shroud, but to make that possible, 
we had to drill necessary holes in the front of the shroud. To secure the halo on the front of the shroud, we used the halo installation wire. To do this, first unwind a few inches of it, snip it off, and go ahead and fish that through one of the holes in the halo. Now once you have the installation wires routed through the holes on the halo, you can move on to fishing the wires of the halo through the shroud. Then start routing the installation wire through the holes that you drilled in the shroud. Now flip your shroud around, twist the wires together about half an inch and cut off the excess. Now grab a pair of needle nose pliers and grab the installation wire by the root. Give it a little tug and give it a few twists. Now you don't want to over twist the installation wires because they will break. And this is the finished product. Now that we have our halos mounted, the next step is to drill a hole in your reflector bowl so you can pass your wires through. Now that we have our hole drilled in our reflector bowl, the next step is to depend these connectors off of the LED wires. Now to depend this connector, you need to take a pick and press down on the little tabs on the pins. Now don't put too much pressure on it because if you over bend them, then when you go to bend them back, they will break. Now give it a slight tug and they should slide right out. Now do the same for the other one. Now before we put the shrouds back on, a good tip is to take a lens cloth and clean the inside of the projector lens. Because if you don't clean it now, it'll be almost impossible to get to it later. Now that we clean the lens, the next step is to mount the shroud. But first we have to fish the wires for the LEDs through this hole that we previously drilled. Now that we ran our LED wires through, the next step is to pop the shroud on. Now we mixed up some more JB Weld and put some on the lens holder, just as an added security to hold the shroud on. But just be careful when putting that on so you don't get any on the lens. When you're putting the shrouds on, make sure you align the tabs that are on the inside of the shroud with the cutouts on the projector so that they're uniform and not misaligned. You want to set the assembly down on the lens on a soft surface so that it runs into the shroud rather than the projector. Now to make it easier on ourselves, we're going to go ahead and put the small rubber housing seal on our wires now rather than later. Now that you have the small rubber housing seals installed on the wires, the next step is to drill a hole for those in the housings. Now, keep in mind the placement of this hole so that you're not in the way of any wires or anything else. We're gonna drill our hole here. That way, it's not in the way of anything. Now that you've drilled your hole, make sure you clean up any plastic burrs around so that you get a good seal. Now, the next step is to go ahead and put our bowls back into the housings. But before we can actually mount that, Let's go ahead and put our wires through the hole that we just drilled. Now that we have our wires through the hole, let's go ahead and pop our seal in. Now that we have our seal in, it's a good idea to pull on the wires to take any slack out of them so that when you go to screw the reflector bowl in, no wires get kinked. Now, once the wires are through the housing seal, if you have multiple LED wires like we do, it's a good idea to mark which wire is which with either a Sharpie mark on the heat shrink, a piece of tape, or even a zip tie works. So you can later identify which wire is which because if you plug the wrong driver into the wrong halo, you could potentially damage the halo. Now that we have the wires taken care of, we can go ahead and screw our bowls back into the housings. Now that we have those in, the next step is to do our final cleaning then we're gonna throw some retro rubber on and throw them in the oven. To reseal these headlights, we're gonna use some Morimoto retro rubber. Now, keep in mind that less is more. You don't wanna to put too much into the channels because you'll have a real mess. When you open the box, you'll notice that it does come in a pretty thick roll. Now, you don't wanna use it in this form. You wanna stretch it out to about this size. Now, you can start placing it in your channels. And if you come up to areas that have a tad bit more glue in the channels already, you can stretch it out even more because like I said, you don't want it to be too thick. Now that we have our retro rubber on and we did our final wipe down, you wanna get some compressed air, whether it's an air compressor or you can buy the 
compressed air cans from the store and blow off any additional dust in the headlights. Don't forget to flow some air through the inside of the projector just to get any additional dust off of the lens. At this point, inspect the lens and the bezel, make sure that's free of dust and dirt, and go ahead and place it back on. Once you reinstall the lens and the bezel, just press it down so it's nice and snug. And then you're ready to throw it back in the oven. Now, to finish off this headlight build, once these headlights come out of the oven, we will use the Morimoto compression clips to secure the lens onto the housing. Now, before you put the headlight back into the oven, make sure you tuck any loose wires away. You don't want them to touch any part of the oven and start melting. And now that our oven is preheated at 255, to reseal the headlight, let's place the headlight back in the oven for five minutes. Once inside of the oven, go ahead and start pressing down the lens to the housing. Now, if you didn't get your seal right, you can go ahead and place the headlight back in the oven, reheat it, and try again. Now, let's go ahead and reinstall the three Phillips screws that we took out when we were taking the headlight apart. Now, go around and inspect the outside of the channel. If you have a bunch of excess glue like that, you can go ahead and just pick that off. Now is a good time to install our Morimoto compression clips, but keep in mind, you can only use them on the part of the headlight that has a channel and a lip on the lens, like on this part of the headlight. Now on this part of the headlight, we cannot use the compression clip because it does not have a lip on the lens. To do this, you simply put the side with the teeth on the lens, like so, and start tightening the bolt. Now, keep in mind when you're tightening these screws, don't over tighten them because if you over tighten them, they will penetrate the housing. Now, when placing the clips, keep in mind, you don't have to use a whole lot of these clips. Just try and space them out like we did. Now that we have our headlights sealed up, let's take them over to our other workbench and finish the assembly so we can throw them on the truck. Now that we're back at the workbench, let's go ahead and put the connectors on our wires. We can first start with the solenoid wires. To do this, take one of the rubber seals, like so, and place it over the pin. Slide it to the back of the pin, like so. Repeat that for the second pin, and now we can put them in our 9006-9005 connector. To do this, make sure the indention on the clip is facing towards the middle of the connector. And then simply push the pin in until it's locked into place. Now, to make sure it's locked into place, give a nice tug on the wire and make sure it's locked in. If it's not locked in, you can grab a set of needle nose pliers, grab the pin, and give it a slight tug. That should lock it into place. Repeat that with the second pin. Now, it doesn't matter which order you put the wires in, the solenoid works either way. Now we can move on to the LED wires. The easiest way I found to do this is to take a razor blade, slide it under the locking mechanism on the pin, and pry up slightly so that it looks like this. Now that you have the locking mechanisms in place, you can slide the pins into the connector. Now to do this, Make sure that the locking mechanisms are facing up and so are the slots in the connector. Keep in mind, it does matter which order you put these wires into this connector. Once you have the pins in the connector, just give both wires a slight tug to make sure they're locked into place. Repeat the process for any additional LED wires that you have. It's the same process whether you have the switchback halos like we do or RGB. The next step is to install the bulbs. D2H style bulb or a D2S style bulb. The main difference between the two solely relies on which ballast you're going to use. And the D2S bulb uses a D2S style ballast. We're going to use the D2S style bulb because it is the most popular option. Now I'm going to show you how you can install your D2H style bulbs into the projectors. First step is to take your bulb holder and start with the bigger plug. After you have that through, you can continue and thread the other wires through. Once you have that on, it's a good idea to take a alcohol prep pad and wipe down the bulb capsule. Basically, with the alcohol prep pad, you're wiping off any kind of oils or contaminants. Now that that's clean, we can go ahead and put it in our projector. 
Now, when you're putting it into the projector, make sure and line up this big square notch with the tab inside of the projector, like so. Now, you can thread on your bulb holder. Now, before you fully tighten down the bulb holder, make sure one last time that the bulb is positioned correctly, and then you can tighten the bulb holder. Now, to secure our bulbs on the projectors, we're gonna use our D2S Moto holders. These have a nice, slim design, and will secure the bulbs with ease. Now I'm gonna show you how to install your D2S bulbs in your projectors. It's a good idea to grab an alcohol prep pad and wipe down the capsule of the bulb to remove any kind of oils or contaminants. Now that that's clean, we can go ahead and put the bulb in the projector. Now when doing this, make sure you align this square notch with the tab inside of the projector, like so. Now that that's in, you can go ahead and install your D2S Moto holder. To install this, align the two pins with the two notches in the Moto holder and slide it on and start threading it on. Make sure you tighten it nice and snug and you're done. Now that we have our bulbs installed, we need to cover the bulb access hole with the housing caps. Now here are the more common sizes used or you can buy the multi-size and cut to fit. Now, to determine the size that you need, you take your headlight housing and you measure the diameter of this circle right here. Then match it with the housing cap sizes we have on the website. Now, the next component in our build is our ballasts. Here on the left, I have a 50 watt ballast and here on the right, I have a 35 watt ballast. Of the two, the more popular one is the 35 watt ballast but if you want a bit of extra boost and brightness, you can go with the 50 watt ballast. Now we chose to go with the 35 watt ballast and the D2S igniters because we went with the D2S bulbs. Now, if you went with the D2H bulbs, you're gonna have to run an amp igniter. Now, before we plug the D2S igniters into the ballast, we're gonna install them on our headlights and route them through the housing caps. Now, before we cut our housing cap, let's measure this groove on the D2S housing seal to know what size hole we need to make. Now, I found that this circle on the inside of the housing caps is a pretty good template. Now that we've cut our hole, we can go ahead and put our wires through. You can also push the D2S housing seal through and then lock in this lower groove. And there we go, we have our D2S housing seal installed. Now that we've finished up our housing cap, we can go ahead and put our D2S igniter on the bulb. To do this, we need to align these two pins on the bulb with the notches on the igniter. Line the notches up with the tabs, press firmly and twist till you hear a clicking sound. Now we can slide our housing cap onto the housing. Now that the housing caps are on the headlights, we're done with the workbench. Let's jump over to the truck and install them. Now that we've finished building these awesome headlights, let's throw them on the truck. First step is to pop the hood. Now that we have the hood open, the next step is to take a flathead screwdriver and pop off these clips. There's one on each side. After those are off, go ahead and grab a 10 millimeter socket and take these two bolts off. Now there is a clip from the back right around this area that you do have to pop off with some pressure, but if the grill's been taken off a few times, then it'll come off pretty easily. This is the clip I was talking about. In our case, it was broken. Now that the grill is off, the next step is to pop off these clips. There's one on each side. To do that, simply just insert your flathead and pop it out. Now that that clip is off, let's go ahead and pop out this trim piece. To do that, simply pry up over here, give it some pressure to pop this center clip out, and then pull it towards yourself. This is the clip I was talking about. Let's repeat the same process to take out this trim piece. Simply pry out and pull towards yourself. 
Now the next step is to take off the bumper. To do that, let's start by taking off these top three clips. Now let's jump under the truck and take off two bolts and two clips. Let's start with the bolts. Here's the first bolt. This is the first clip. Now there's usually another clip here that goes into this hole, but in our case, this tab is broken. Next, let's pop off this clip. Next, let's pop off this clip. Now, keep in mind, these clips do sometimes get a little stubborn. Next step is to take out this clip and we need to take out a bolt here. Next step is to take out this clip. To do that, get a flat head, rotate it 90 degrees, and then pry it out. Lastly, let's take out this bolt. While you're down here, go ahead and unplug the fog lights on both sides of the truck. Now that all the clips and bolts are taken off, we can go ahead and start prying to take the bumper off. Now to do this, pull down on the bumper a little bit and out. You will have to tug a little bit harder because there is this hidden clip. And let's repeat the same steps on this side. Pull down and out. Now that we have the sides popped off, go ahead and grab the bumper by the middle and pull it off. Now that the bumper's off, let's go ahead and take the headlights off. To do this, let's go ahead and start by taking this screw off. Next, this screw. Next, this screw. And finally, this screw. Now that the bolts are out, let's go ahead and pry up these two tabs. And now we can pull the headlight off. Now that the headlight's out, let's start by disconnecting this connector. To do this, simply press this tab and pull out. Next, let's pop off this connector. To do this, you can either grab it with your hands or you can grab a flathead screwdriver, insert it and simply pry up. Lastly, let's remove this connector. To remove this, simply grab a flathead screwdriver, push down on this tab and wiggle the connector back and forth to take it out. Now, repeat the same steps on the other side by removing all the bolts for the headlight and the connector sockets. Now that we have the headlights off, let's go ahead and install our motor control harness. To do this, there are a few simple connections, which are all labeled. First, we have a positive battery lead. Next, we have our first ballast connection, which also leads to a grounding terminal. In the same area, we also have a high beam connection. Now, here we have the plug that goes into the factory high and low beam connection. In this case, we have a H4 style connection, but this varies depending on what your vehicle uses. And finally, we have our second high beam connector, second ballast connector, and our second ground lead. Now, let's go ahead and install our motor control harness, but first, let's lay out our wires to get a rough estimate of where the wires need to be. Once you have the wires placed, let's go ahead and mount our motor controller. Now, to mount the motor control box, use the built-in tab and use an existing bolt on your vehicle. Make sure and mount it vertically so that you don't get water going into the connector and going back into the motor control box. It can be slightly to the side, but no more than that. Now, we're gonna use this battery tie-down bolt to mount our motor control box. To do this, we're gonna bend this built-in tab, remove this nut, and put it on. Now, let's go ahead and plug our 
motor control harness H4 plug into the factory H4 plug. Now let's go ahead and ground our first grounding terminal. Now keep in mind when making the ground connections, be sure to choose a bolt like we did that is going straight into the vehicle's body. This is a very essential part because if you don't get a good ground connection, then your HIDs will not work. And honestly, this is the number one cause of HIDs not working. Now, let's go ahead and mount our first ballast. There's a few ways of mounting this. You can either use the bolt holes that are built in with a self-tapping screw, or what we're gonna do is flip it over and use one of our Velcro pads. Now, to use the Velcro pads, you wanna grab yourself a alcohol prep pad and wipe down the ballast. Next, grab your Velcro pad, peel off one side, and evenly stick it on. Now that we have the Velcro pad on the ballast, go ahead and take another alcohol prep pad and wipe down the flat surface on the vehicle where you're gonna mount the ballast to. We're gonna mount ours here. Make sure that it's nice and clean because otherwise the Velcro pad won't stick well. The first connector has two pins and the second connector has three pins. Now, the plug that's coming from the motor control harness goes into the plug that has two pins. Now, the igniter that's coming from the headlight will plug into the plug that has three pins. Now that that connector is in, we can go ahead and take off the other side of the Velcro pad. Let's go ahead and stick that on the vehicle. Once you have the ballast in place, apply pressure to make sure the adhesive sticks. Now, the next step is to connect the positive battery terminal. Do this by taking the terminal that's labeled battery plus and connecting it to the bolt that's on the positive battery terminal. Now let's move on to the other side of the vehicle. Let's start by mounting our ballasts. Again, let's take an alcohol prep pad and wipe down the back of the ballast. Take our Velcro pad Peel back one side and stick it on. Now that the Velcro pad is on, let's grab our second connector that's labeled ballast and plug it into the ballast. Take another alcohol prep pad and wipe down the vehicle. Now that that's clean, peel back the other side of the Velcro pad and let's stick it on the truck. Now luckily on this side, we actually have a bolt with a grounding terminal. Let's go ahead and take the bolt off and ground our harness. Now that we've installed the second grounding terminal, you should go ahead and get some zip ties and secure any loose wiring. Now that we have our motor control harness installed, the next step is to wire in our LED driver modules. Now, to wire these in, you can either solder the connections into the vehicle, or you can use our single waterproof wire taps. The first step in using the waterproof wire tap is to open this part of the wire tap. Take your wire, thread it through the hole till it hits the stopper inside, and press it down. This is done a lot easier with a pair of pliers. Simply just clamp it down and you're set. This is what the finished product looks like once you've installed the waterproof wire taps onto the wires. Now that you have the waterproof wire taps installed, let's go over to the truck. Move back any conduit that's in the way so that you have easy access to the wires. Now that we've moved back the conduit and we see the wiring, in our case, the ground wire is the white and black wire the turn signal wire is the red and black wire, and the parking light wire is the green wire. Now that we've identified that, we can go ahead and make our connections. Now coming from the LED driver, the ground wire is the black wire. To install this side of the wire tap, open up this end and place the vehicle wire inside, like so. Close down the cover 
Once the vehicle wire is centered inside, take a pair of pliers and press down. If pressed down properly, this top cover should be locked in like so. Now let's make our turn signal connection. The turn signal wire coming from the driver is the orange wire. Again, let's open up the second end of the wire tap, place the wire inside, take your pliers and clamp down. And lastly, the parking light wire coming from the Morimoto LED driver is the white wire. Now again, that is the green wire coming from the truck. Like before, let's open up the end of the wire tap, place the wire inside, and clamp down with your pliers. And there we have it. Now here's what it should look like when you've installed all the necessary wire taps. In our case, we had to run six of them because we had two LED drivers. Now the next step is to put our wires back into the conduit like so. And just for added security, it's a good idea to purchase some cloth harness tape to secure the conduit. The cloth harness tape is also a good product to use on any exposed wiring you have like this. As you can see, now that I've installed the cloth harness tape, it produces a nice clean finish and added protection for the wiring. Next, let's plug in our LED wires. Now, if you read on the LED driver, it says what they are for. Lastly, let's plug in the three prong connector from the igniter into the ballast. Now that all of our wiring connections are made, we can go ahead and put the headlight back into the mounting location and start threading in our bolts. Now that we've loosely threaded the bolts, we can tighten them down. Now that you've tightened down the headlight, it's a good idea to go ahead and turn on the lights, go through all the functions and make sure everything works. Once you've confirmed that everything works, go ahead and jump on the other side of the truck, mount the headlight, check make sure everything works again, and then you're good to throw on the bumper and the grill. Now that the install is complete, our headlights are aimed. You can tell that the output is a lot brighter than stock, very crisp, very clean, very wide and you just have the light exactly where you need it without blinding oncoming traffic. Now we flip to high beam. As you can see, it's a lot brighter than stock. It is higher and overall, it's gonna help you with your nighttime driving. Wow, look how incredible these headlights turned out. You too can get similar results if you have this kind of truck or any vehicle if you follow our step-by-step -step guide. Now, if you wanna complete the look of this truck, check out our video on our Morimoto XB LED fog lights. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next video.